Welcome to part five of our lecture on the Old Testament and Christian theology. Again, why are we studying the Old Testament? We study the Old Testament because of its theological contribution to our understanding about, about who God is, about what our mission is, about who we are. And we've looked at the examples of Jesus in the early church, um, the apostles. We've talked about it's hard, it's difficult to understand who Jesus is. It's difficult to understand the nature of God. And I want to also talk about today, or this at this particular lecture, that it's difficult to understand the nature of creation. And this is an essential piece. Now, in our book, Called to be Holy, Dr. Roosevelt lays out the difference between kind of a mythological worldview and the biblical worldview, and he talks about that. But this, this whole point, the nature of creation, it's actually, it's absolutely vital, especially in our context now, as we think about how to communicate the, the gospel within our cultures to have a, a good creation theology. And the, the thing that stands out that, that makes biblical Christianity different is that it's, it asserts that God stands outside of creation. Again, God isn't a rock. God isn't a tree. God isn't a, per, isn't a human being. God isn't, other than Jesus, of course, God isn't a plant. God isn't a blade of grass, a snail, or anything else. That God is the transcendent creator God who stands apart from his creation, who spoke creation into being, and who, again, as we saw in the last lecture, engages creation, can be imminent as part, in, within the creation and acts within the creation, but fundamentally, God is different, categorically different and separate from creation. He's the holy one. He's the majestic one. But we're not simply deists or we're not Muslims who have a very transcendent view of God also, were biblical Christians who believe that though God stands transcendent from creation, that creation remains sort of an open system, if you want to use that sort of a, a, a scientific kind of jargon, that God continues to operate. So God isn't just the one who kind of winds the clock up and steps back. God engages creation and continues to work within it for the sake of his mission. So God, the transcendent one, can still do miraculous things within creation. Um, God, the transcendent one, incarnates himself in the person of Jesus Christ. God sends the Spirit into creation to engage us. But the, again, the key piece is, is that God stands outside of creation, and creation is not God. And when we look at Genesis 1 and 2, for example, uh, we see a perfect creation. So it's important to understand in the biblical worldview that, God, that the, the world as God intended, was a very good place. That's Genesis 1.31. And the way that God intended for things to be, there were perfect mutual relationships on three levels, God and humanity. There was no enmity between God and people. God would walk in the garden with the people. God spoke with them. God creates people, as we'll see in the next lecture, for the sake of his mission. So there was a good relationship between God and people. In the, in the creation, the way that God intended, there was, no, there was no issues between humanity and the environment. Humanity lived in a garden. There was no struggle for food. There were, so there was, no, there was no environmental issues. And there was no enmity or any problems between men and women. The battle of sexes is a product of human sin. Again, both, as we'll see in the next lecture, both male and female equally and fully created in the image of God. And so the fundamental problem, and the, the, the reason that the world that we live in isn't the world that God intended, isn't because of uh, some uh, fault or flaw in the divine, but it's because of human sin and disobedience. That's what Genesis 3 to 11 says. So the world that we live in isn't the world that God originally created. And God's mission ultimately is to lead us back to... Um, a new creation, a new heavens, and a new earth. That's how the scriptural story ends. So the fundamental problem that we deal with is human disobedience. So let me know if you have any questions as we uh, as we um, continue to move through this material.